hey, listen, if you were giving me like 10 planets and each one of those planets was like the content and the size of a Skyrim, uh, that's way more than I ever needed. Yeah. You know, like, so Skyrim was big enough. I was just talking a little bit about the Xbox showcase. and there You was, were. There was a game that I didn't really get much into, but I thought made pertinent sense to talk about right now. Uh, because you were interested in talking a little bit about space. And... Space. As Tim Curry once said, Space! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we gotta make, the, uh, title of this episode has to just be Spice. With, with that one screenshot of the Tim Curry one, saying it. Yes, the legend. From Command and Conquer, Red Alert 3. 3, yeah. The, the legend, the legend himself. Uh, but anyway, we were gonna talk a little bit about Space, and I thought it made sense because, uh, they released some stuff about Starfield. Actually, they had a whole thing after the initial conference, which was an in-depth look at uh, Starfield. It was like 45, 50 minutes or something of talking about Starfield specifically. And one of the things that people talked about afterward was the debate, as we get into a lot of times, about size. The size of a space game how big it actually is, and if it really should be as big as they're making it. Because I know you haven't seen the conference, but I will give you an impression that they're talking about a thousand planets. Okay. Today. Are these, like, fully crafted out planets? Like, fully explorable, like... I, how big are these planets? I, are we talking there's a settlement you go into and a little bit of wilderness? This is what I don't know. I have an impression that there are certain worlds that are like the core story worlds where there are there are actual towns and cities and hubs and everything like that. And that there are other planets that you visit that have more radiant quests that are like uh, procedurally generated so that there's a combination of them. Uh, that you have some places that are definitely crafted, specifically, and that there are other places that are, like, procedurally generated areas. I don't know what the percentage from one to the next is. Uh, if I were a betting man, I would probably say that there's, like, five to ten of the worlds that are crafted specifically so that they can do stories and missions and hub worlds and characters and that there would be more radiant quests on you know the rest of them so that you can gather resources or expand your lore or, you know go go and check out the cosmos and everything like that uh that would be my guess Maybe 10 to 20, uh, because it sounds like they're trying to, the overall quest line is about discovering some of the questions that have plagued mankind from the very beginning, now that they can shoot for the stars. So anyway, this has kind of led to a lot of people asking about, you know, the size and the scope of space games, and what that actually means, and you had some thoughts about space. Yeah, I, I play a fair number of space games. I enjoy yes. a fair number of space games. I have mm -hmm. Elite Dangerous that I have several hundred hours into and is a uh, one-to-one -one scale of the Milky Way Galaxy. Um, no, no Man's Sky, which is just enormous, but also feels incredibly empty at times. Yeah. Um, there's games like Stellaris, for instance, yes. which is, uh, again, galaxy-spanning huge okay. uh, th there's other games too that i have like on my wish list like everspace 2 for instance you've played a bit of oh yes um, yes and i've played and more think, of it since it uh, released in full from out of game preview but, and then i think uh there yeah. was one rogue galaxy or something like rebel galaxy there's just yeah. a ton that i like i love the idea and then like eve online you know yeah. things like that you know there's a ton of ton of space games out there mm -hmm. but um scope and scale are one of those things that think space games do wrong i don't think they Fair. focus where they need to mm -hmm. a lot because they want to go space is big and we want to show you how big space is yes and nathan have you ever watched a movie or something with space in it 
Uh, I mean, I hear that there was this thing about wars in the stars and yeah, treks in the stars, and yeah. I've seen some things about that. So, uh, what do they usually gloss over in those movies? Oh, the the emptiness of space. That's why they need to do hyperdrives and they need yeah. to do warp speed. Yeah, so the big thing that they gloss over in space media is the fact that space is vast, empty, and boring. The hyperdrive, the warp drive, the faster-than-light drive. Yeah. In my favorite book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. You know how they do it in that? It's the infinite improbability drive. It just kind of pops you out somewhere. Right. Uh, Warhammer 40k, space, uh, faster, faster than light travel isn't quite fast enough, we're gonna use some, you know, psychic interface here with the, uh, warp space, and it kinda poops you into another realm of reality, and then poops you back out. I don't know why I'm using the word poops. Uh, well, because, uh, space is shit? I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of emptiness with nothing going on. Have you ever played Breathage? I have it. I have not played it yet. Okay. Uh, I think in some way, maybe I'll do it on stream at some point, just because to kind of showcase. But I think that that kind of explains your problem with the vastness. Like, it's in space, uh, but it's obviously trying to, you know, hone itself in. But there's still a lot of your time where you're trying to traverse the emptiness without running out of oxygen before you have to get back to a hub and just trying to find the little elements that are scattered throughout what is now this gigantic open space. Some people have called it like Subnautica in space, but I think that that's a little bit of a disservice to Subnautica because at least in Subnautica it feels like the world is more alive than that. Yeah. Um, but in space, it is. It's just. It's literally just that vacuum. Right. That has these so, little things in it. So in the case of like Starfield, if it's a thousand planets, that's a lot of planets. But if each one is really only the size of say a city in Skyrim. Yeah. Is it? really fair to call them planets and not just a thousand different individual cities or if they are as big as like a planet but the amount of stuff you actually do is just indicative of wh what you'd see in a normal hub area of of a skyrim like it, yeah like like imagine if you had riften and it's like uh, the amount of stuff that you did in riften but it's a planet it's the same amount of content, but it's on a literal planet now. So yeah. you have to kind of go around to find, find stuff. And, and then it begs, how big are the planets? Are they the size of planets in, say, Outer Wilds? Which right. is to say, small and Very traversable small. in a matter of minutes? Right. Or are they big, like in Elite Dangers, when the planet you land on can literally be hundreds of kilometers, you know, in diameter? Right. You know, or right. thousands of kilometers in diameter. Like, you can land on it, get out into a moon buggy, essentially, and then, like, this planet has a diameter of 300, you know, meters or whatever it is, the, the kilometers. Yeah. It's like, okay, I've got, uh, I could travel around this entire planet on this car, and it would take me a while. So, space is big. Yes. We know this. Space is also very empty. Despite yes. how much stuff is in it, as uh, again, my favorite book, Douglas Adams, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is space is really big, mind bogglingly big. It's also really boring. Yeah. <laughs> I have sure been noted to say, probably on multiple occasions, I think space games could do better focusing down on a smaller area of space. So, a thousand planets? Don't need that. Give me ten. Yeah, give me ten that are really, you know, rich in, yeah. in what they do. Uh, that's Hey, listen, if you were giving me, like, ten planets and each one of those planets was, like, the content and the size of a Skyrim, uh, that's way more than I ever needed, yeah. you know? Like, so Skyrim was big enough. Humans in real life inhabit one planet. Yeah. And there's a lot to do here. Yeah. I mean, we don't do a fraction of it. No. No, so, like, our solar system has, a, you know, at least eight other planets, depending on how you're counting. Sure. You sure. know, and dwarf planets. And, like, 
even if you're to set a game in space in our solar system if you wanted to you could make it a one-to-one -one size of our solar system and actually have it still be hundreds of thousands of miles yeah and and from one side like to the other from sure. the sun out to the furthest point it would be hundreds of thousands of miles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i think millions right. to be fair i don't remember how big our solar system technically is right right well i mean if you think about like a, the size of something like a jupiter you can't like get around jupiter in like it, it if it was walkable it would take you your lifetime practically to get several, around several yeah, of them several of those lifetimes now if you include then moons and everything so that you have like io and europa and, and all of those and going yeah. around those and celadus you know then you add that all together that's not just a game world that's literally your lifetime if if we that's... get to a point where you ha can take your entire lifetime to try and get through a game it's yeah. a little big and I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily mind it if you were providing context for it but obviously they're not doing that like there's yeah. there's not no one actually even if you love epic rpgs no one actually wants a game that is going to take you years and years <laughs> to finish right that's why you usually see main campaigns even if there's all of this side stuff that are usually like 10 to 20 hours for the <laughs> main campaign even if right. there's a hundred hours of content in there would it be really cool if a, if a game decided to go hey we're making a space game it's set in the solar system and we're gonna have earth mars you know, and a couple of the moons, sure. and maybe Pluto, actually like habited, inhabited, mm -hmm. and then some star bases and some other bases on other moons. Sure. And then the rest of it has maybe there's some mining rigs and some uh, shipyards and stuff out there. There's stuff all over, but it's like we're only going to massively have populations on, uh, like Earth, Mars. Uh, maybe Mercury, but that's a little bit too close to the sun, so who knows? Maybe you could have one of those theoretical cloud cities uh, in Venus. Yep, yep. Since um, it's theorized we could have a habitable zone in Venus's atmosphere. Right, you can't have it on the ground because you'll get crushed to bits. Crushed and melted. Yep. Um, but, you know, if you had something like that, but then we're like, we're gonna actually, like, fill it with a hundreds dozens of different places you can go sure but it's still one-to-one -one scale with the actual solar system you go mm. wow this is a lot right. because instead of now you've got an entire galaxy mm -hmm. thousands of planets you've got i've got thousands of points of interest sure in a a space i'm familiar with and it's still gargantuan one problem i'll play devil's advocate here and i'll say i i think that the one problem here is when we're talking about trying to you know make a space game smaller in its scale i also think that one of the reason people like the idea of space is because of the vastness and the 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 enlargement of it like how how massive a world scale is there's a certain awe and inspiring nature to the the sheer gravity around you and when we try to create those smaller spaces you kind of still have to make it feel large in scope because the reason why people want to play a space game is for the very reason that it feels huge even if you're not necessarily going through the boring parts it, it still needs to feel huge like i'll tell you i'm i'm working my way through the mass effect series uh trilogy again i'm doing the legendary edition and they have a few d depending on which games you play they have interesting ways of representing like the milky way galaxy different clusters where your ship can go to these different planets on an over map and if there's anything interesting, you can like scan the planets and there will be occasionally some missions that are on those planets. And, and then when you go to those planets, you get down into the missions 
and you're in the facilities or you're in the specific areas where the missions take place. So that even though, you know, you're going to this one system and then this one planet where you're really at is the city. You're at the city of Ilium, you're at the Citadel, you're at Omega, wherever. Uh, that it hones it back in from these very large places down to, to the very small ones. Where they got into trouble, as you probably know, is that after they did the trilogy, they did Andromeda. And people were not big on Andromeda. Do you right. know the big change that they made to the design? I don't design? know what the change was in Andromeda. Instead of focusing on the narrative of going to those very specific areas, in Andromeda they had planets that were open world areas that you explored. Okay. So that you would go around and do more of the sandboxy stuff. So it was less focused on the story elements and more focused on the exploration of these of all of these planets that you would go to. And my remembrance, although I guess since I'm going through the trilogy, maybe I'll do Andromeda again. My remembrance is... Oh, you have to. It's part of the trilogy. No, Andromeda is the fourth one. It doesn't count oh. as part of the trilogy. Well, you have to, because now I said so. Now, now you said so, but... Uh, if I go back to Andromeda, I might be able to confirm this later, but, but the thing I remember about Andromeda is the feeling of being off the narrative track a lot, where I was just kind of like going off into seemingly nothing to experience very little that had to do with this very rich storyline and character development that I remembered from the first three games which is what people really loved about it, even though space felt big. And in Andromeda, they kind of wanted to say, but now we're going to explore it, but then you create these large areas that feel more empty. They don't actually create more content right. as they did from the first one. Is this really Devil's Advocate or telling me that I'm right? You're, you're right. My Devil's Advocate part was the idea of making sure that you can still give the scope of the space games without losing the vastness of it. Because in those first three games, they still have the vastness of space. Oh yeah, the you way know. you do that is you let, you, you let somebody stand on the ground on one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. Mm -hmm. As they view Jupiter or Saturn from the ground looming entirely taking up your entire sky yeah there's yeah. there's a thing i took a screenshot i think of in the first game where you get to like be on a rover on the mako uh on the moon and you can take a screenshot where Rails you are looking where you are looking at earth yeah so you're staring up at earth and getting a very good sense of scope uh, you mentioned Everspace 2, and I think yes. Everspace 2 actually does something really interesting with that. Because I was thinking about this not too long ago, about how they get around this one problem, and they do a really good job of it. They have areas where you have the missions. Mm -hmm. Now, they know that you, you have this huge amount of space, and you're going to have to do it. And so they go into basically like a hyper route. Your hyper route takes you from the one area that you're exploring and takes you on to essentially like a 3D overmap that's still a plane. And you can, you, you can say, that's the point I want to go to and mark it on your map. And you'll go there to another area where the actual stuff is on a different planet. Along the way, though, you get these little signals that says distress signal here or point of interest or something like that. And you can veer off and go to those places. But when you go, it's again a much smaller area of space that you're exploring that has essentially a boundary to it. Because, it's, because they're saying just that. There's nothing beyond this that's worth looking at. Here's where the actual, here's where the actual mission stuff is. Here's where it is. It's similar, but different to like how Elite Dangerous does it. It goes, oh, hey, there's a thing here, but there's no boundary when you're there. It's here's where the thing is. It's here and it takes place in this area. Yeah. And then outside of that, you, you can still go wherever you want, but it's like 
there's not much generated right. out there. Right. So, like, I, I guess this is the speculative part, is that I don't know what Starfield's really going to do. I guess we're going to find out soon, because they think it launches in September. It's, it's coming out very soon. Um, but from what I saw, literally exploring your ship... Uh, being able to go on to other ships, doing, like, stealth missions to take over those ships, doing combat in space, doing stuff on ground. I don't know how they're going to handle this, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. If yeah, maybe we'll they come out. up, Maybe they come up with a good solution to this problem of creating a vastness of space while also not bogging you down in monotony. Yeah, so the one thing I'm hoping from Starfield is to fight a space dragon there also has to be horse armor for my spaceship called the horse yes you can you can build your ship however you want you, you can i'm like gonna make mine a horse make it look like a trojan horse you make it look like a horse head and then name it horse armor horse armor yeah perfect yeah perfect, perfect. i think you can do that i think it, i think it's possible if i get starfield i'll be doing that and perfect I, I like elder scrolls and i liked fallout and i definitely never beat fallout 4 but I'll, I'll have to keep an eye on starfield because they do make pretty solid games for all the bugs they have i will shit on bethesda a lot of the time for the amount of bugs and things but one thing i can never really cite them for is that they don't have aspirations to make a very large epic game whether they succeed right. or fail they do have designs to make something that truly feels epic in scale and more or less that thing they tend to get right they get the they get the feeling of something epic and and awe-inspiring yeah. whether it succeeds or fails but in the meantime if you have thoughts on uh, space games Yes. The scope of them, whether they're too big, too small, or just right, maybe. Did they uh, hit the Goldilocks zone? Did they hit the Goldilocks zone where life is inhabitable and you are able to sustain liquid water? If you are uh, <laughs> thinking about that, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. Tell us uh, your favorite space fact. Tell us if there's a space game that you really liked and how they handled uh, travel. Yeah. Plenty of them out there. 